An empty school's always a really strange place. March was a really weird month. I think we were well and truly on with that journey in our own heads of thinking, OK, there is something coming that we're going to have to deal with quite seriously here. But then they said we were actually going to close school and that was a really... Well, it's two days we had still at school and um, before the children were told they weren't be, going to be able to come back in again for some time. So we had a lovely two days, really lovely two days. We just were outside nearly all the time, playing together, working together outside. And we did lots of um, sort of games together, talking about what the good things were going to be about lockdown and um, the things that we thought were going to be really hard for us. And then they all went home and we haven't seen them very much since. Not physically, anyway. When I was at home during the first bit of lockdown, one of the things I started doing was um, typing up the school logbooks, which we've got from 1854 onwards, um, because I've never had time to do it. And it was really interesting because I realised that actually this isn't particularly new. <laughs> COVID-19 is new, but there have been illnesses that have meant that children couldn't come to this school for quite a long time. Most of these little bits of paper in these are measles outbreaks or influenza outbreaks. So you've got 50 children off school. The health inspectors come to say that we've got to close school for a week because of um, whooping cough or measles or influenza or whatever it is. Um, so it made me realise, actually, we live in an incredibly healthy age. Um, because when these children were off, and some of them were off for 11 months. You know, they got ill and they just didn't come back to school for months and months and months. And the teachers had no idea, really, what was going on. Whereas for us, um, our children went home and on Monday morning, they got lots of lessons. And gradually over time, that's evolved. So at first it was, um, we sent them home with paper packs, things to do. And they also had online learning platforms. Um, and then gradually over time, we've sort of increased the amount of video teaching. But it's not the same as actually being with the children, because you don't know what you don't know. And the only ones we're interacting with like that are the ones who are interacting. And we know everybody is interacting in, to some extent, but it's not like having a class full of children in front of you. Planning for reopening has been incredibly complicated. I mean, at this time of the uh, 1850s, if their teaching staff were off, they'd just pop the student teacher in front of the 100 kids, student teacher, probably aged about 16. We're a lot more health and safety aware <laughs> nowadays, so um, the risk assessments involved in reopening school are massive, as they should be. In order to open up, we've had to move a lot of our teaching outside. We try and teach outside if it's lovely anyway. But I have a horrible feeling that as soon as we open school, it will rain. So we've, we've ordered two marquees and that makes two great big outdoor classrooms. Um, we've already got lots of picnic benches and things up outside, so we can spread the children out. We've got three groups starting back, and those three groups have to stay separate, so we have to stagger playtimes um, and make sure that they've got their own areas to use so that they don't go into anybody else's area at any time. But I'm sure as soon as the children come in, it will change because just their voices and the way they move, uh, it will bring it to life again immediately. It's like when they go into, when we do productions in St Oswald's Church, you can almost feel that building go, oh, people, and this school I'm sure will feel the same.